I pray to speak and be heard in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have all heard the phrase, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And we've probably heard it so many times in our Christian circles that we've become too familiar with it and don't really give it any thought. It's just something that we've heard. But the reality of the matter is that this verse and the passage that follows it contains one of Jesus' most profound declarations in all of Scripture. The phrase, I am the bread of life, whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me shall never be thirsty, necessitates our deliberation on both the depth of Jesus' identity, who he's claiming to be, but also our relationship with him. As such, I've entitled this message, Eternity's Moment. And now I want to draw you into an intriguing tapestry of explanation. Jesus is out and about with his disciples. And in the few chapters preceding today's gospel, there's been the wedding at Cana, Jesus driving out the money changers in the temple, Jesus meeting the Samaritan woman at the well, healing the paralyzed man by the pool at Bethesda, and the famous parable of the five loaves and the two fishes. Well, as you can imagine, Jesus has attracted quite a bit of attention and a considerable number of followers. This leads the Jews to ask him a question. What are the works God wants us to do? To which Jesus replies, the work that God wants is this, that you believe in the one whom God has sent. Well, the Jews ask for a miraculous sign such that they might believe that Jesus is the one. And they mention their ancestors were given bread from heaven, referring, of course, to Moses, the wilderness journey, and the manna. Jesus tells them, my father gives you true bread from heaven, to which the Jews reply, give us this bread always. And then Jesus makes this incredibly bold statement. I, I, I am the bread of life. Well, frankly, the Jews were not impressed. In fact, I think it would be fair to say they were offended. Jesus did not appear to be heaven sent. And they immediately set about murmuring and complaining. Joseph's son. Don't we know his mum and dad? Now, I just want to stop for a moment at this point and make a comparison between ourselves as contemporary Christians and the Jews of Jesus' time. We have the benefit of the New Testament with the narrative about Mary and the angel Gabriel's visitation. We have the knowledge of the crucifixion and the resurrection. And we have a 2,000 year wealth of theology and church tradition to lean on. The Jews didn't have that, so we can't be too quick to criticize their behavior. However, what we and the Jews of the time have in common is skepticism. As a modern culture, we're fixated on things that are tangible provable and temporal, as opposed to things we can't quite put our finger on, demonstrate scientifically, or have a reasonably definite timeline for. And the pronouncement, I am the 
bread of life isn't tangible, it's not scientific, and it's not even obviously understandable. It's really an out there kind of statement. But this is where the profundity kicks in and where we've missed it with our familiarity. Jesus rules out being definitively boxed in, but what can be understood from his words? And I'd like to pick up on just a couple of things. Immediately, it's a statement that transcends the merely physical. Whilst bread is a fundamental statement in our diet, and it is symbolic of our need for sustenance, it's not just physical sustenance. We need to really have life. We need spiritual sustenance and immortality to really have life. But let's just draw back to the physical. Everything that we make, everything that we grow, begins with God. As human beings, we can't create anything from nothing. Everything we beget comes from something that God first gave us. So we absolutely, whether you believe it or not, rely on God for physical, earthly sustenance. And if you think about it, for just a moment, even life itself is God-given. We can put the ingredients together, but only God can give life to those elements. And what about the spiritual and eternal life? It is God who sustains these also. Now there are those who have a different worldview, a different perspective of course, those who think that materialism, self-sufficiency, consumerism and medicine will give their life meaning, purpose, joy and perhaps even immortality one day. But if we look around in the world we live in, there's not much evidence to support that that is a successful perspective. It's only, it's only in Jesus that we can find our thirst quenched here on earth. And only, absolutely only in Jesus that we can have eternal life. Anything else falls short and eventually, inevitably, falls apart. Another profound point Jesus makes is when he doubles down on his declaration, I am the bread of life, and he reinforces it with the statement, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread I give for the life of the world is my flesh. Again, it's familiar and we gloss over it. But this is actually the crux of the Christian message. It speaks to Christ giving his flesh, his life, so that we can have life and have it to the full. It is the ultimate nourishment that we need and desire. So, this leads to the question, how do we partake of this living bread? How do we come to Jesus? Do you know, I have to have a little bit of a time out and think about this. I did some self-reflection and these are some of my thoughts about how I come to Jesus. And the first thought was repeatedly, it's ongoing, it's daily. I come in prayer, in worship, in the things that I say and the things that I don't say. In the times that I stay silent, I'm actually coming to God. I come to Jesus when I come to church and I come to Jesus in the rituals and traditions. I come to Jesus I partake of Jesus 
when the Holy Spirit moves in me and I need to change. And I wondered if perhaps you could have a little think about how you come to Jesus. But of course, and I think this is of the utmost importance, we come to Christ, we literally partake of the living bread when we come together in communion. In these moments, we are united with the divine and with one another as one body sharing in one bread. This is more than a ritualistic act. It is a transformational, sacred union that defies and transcends human logic. This is the point in time when the temporary meets the eternal. This is eternity's moment. And it's steeped in the love of our sacrificial saviour. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. His statement identifies him as God and also the nature of his relationship with us. Amen.